A lot has changed at this extremely popular Disney World Hotel. This is a full tour of the new and improved Disney's Boardwalk Inn Resort. Boardwalk is a deluxe resort themed around a turn-of-the-century Atlantic City resort with 378 rooms and Disney Vacation Club villa and studio options. It is situated on the Disney World Boardwalk, meaning there are tons of entertainment, recreation, and dining options. It's also situated in the Epcot Resort area, which in my opinion is one of the best locations for hotels in Disney World, walking distance to Disney's Yacht and Beach Club resorts, as well as the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin, and Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now, if you've been around the channel for a while, you might know that I have stayed and toured the boardwalk before, but it has gotten a lot of updates, including those rooms. So we are here today to see the new dining, talk about the updates to the lobby and the design, as well as all those updates to the rooms. And our trip was arranged by our friends over at MEI Travel. MEI Travel are amazing vacation planners that can help you get everything you want out of your Disney World vacation. Uh, and they've certainly helped us with that this time. Now I'm at the back of the hotel, but I am heading into the lobby to check in. Although I get to skip the front desk, which is pretty cool. When you check into your Disney World Resort Hotel, you can do so via the My Disney Experience app ahead of your stay. You can put all the information that you need for check-in into that app. You can get your contact info, your payment info, everything in there, any room requests, and then just check in on the app. Then when you arrive at your hotel, you'll get texted your room number if you'd like, and you can head straight to your room using your phone or magic band to go ahead and unlock that door. Now don't worry, you can also check in the old-fashioned way at the front desk, and I usually like to check in online and then make a quick stop by the front desk when it's not too busy to pick up a map of the resort as well as a physical room key just because I like to have it. Oh my gosh, the fire's on. It is um, a high of 57 today. I think right now it's about 45 outside, so it's one of the rare times that a fire is actually appropriate in Orlando. Is it actually warm? A little. <laughs> check-in time is 3 p.m. and you will get that text that tells you your room number. Uh, you can request an early check-in, but it is not guaranteed. Now today, I actually did request an early check-in and my room was ready at 1 p.m. Um, I wasn't even quite here yet, so it uh, definitely can happen and you can note when you check-in in the app what time you plan to arrive. If you do check-in before your room is ready, you can stop by Bell Services to drop your luggage off if you want to head on to the parks and they will store it for you for when your room is ready. Let's go check out that room. I'm so excited for this because it is one of the new and improved renovated rooms. Now at the time of filming, the refurbishments are not quite done, but you can definitely notice some newer touches around. And we're going into the elevator. Now here we are getting our first glance at the new hallways, carpeting, and decor around the resort. Um, still staying true to that uh, turn of the century theme, but with a couple new touches. My favorite are these new lamps, which are the adorable silhouettes of Mickey, Minnie, Pluto, Goofy, Donald, Minnie. I said Minnie twice, but look at them in their little fancy hat wear. Look at Goofy's hat. Found our room, so drum roll please, as we get ready to see inside, hopefully. I'm using my phone to unlock the door. Yay. Ooh. Oh my gosh, this is so much nicer. Wow. Oh, it's amazing. Oh my gosh. I love this room. I love it so much. I just walked in here. My first impression is I'm blown away. One of my favorite Disney World room themes that I have seen. Truly, this is, that looks amazing at first glance. I absolutely can't wait to look around. I think that's exactly what we should do right now. All right, so this is a deluxe resort. That's Disney's most expensive resort category, which means it is going to be very spacious, as you can see. Um, a lot of floor space in here. Uh, it just feels like an open room. It, it was, would be a comfortable space to stay even if you had four adults in here. Different room options here at Boardwalk include resort view or water view, club level options, deluxe rooms, and suites. And let's talk about that pricing. This is a deluxe resort, so we're gonna have 
expensive, expensive rates. Um, remember, rates do vary based on date, and you should always, always, always check out the Disney website for special offers. Now, if you're worried that you might miss a special offer, you could also use a vacation planner like MEI Travel. You can find their link in the description, and MEI Travel can help you plan your vacation. They will do the legwork for you. They will make sure they're keeping an eye out for any special offers that could apply, saving you all of the money you want, sticking to your budget. They will handle all of that. So that is definitely something to consider if that sounds really stressful to you and you just still want to have a great vacation. MEI Travel can help you out. They've certainly helped us. Look at this room. Do you not love it? Thank you, MEI. In 2024, base rooms at the boardwalk run from $640 per night to around $1,120 per night. When looking at club level and deluxe rooms, those run from about $900 to around $1,860 per night. And when you go up to those garden rooms and suites, you're looking at rooms that are from $1,160 to $4,700 per night. So this room can be over $1,000. Whew, wowza, that's a lot. So it's definitely, definitely an expensive hotel, which is why it's so important that I take you through everything you get when you stay here, everything you have access to, so you can decide if it's worth that splurge. We are gonna start with the door for our tour. Um, you enter the hotel room through this door, you get your room occupied a sign that you can hang outside the door standard disney door lock system which is a um just like on the door this is the uh magic band scanner your key scanner you've got a bar lock now do we have a deadbolt we do and a deadbolt continuing in on our left here we have your closet space which is the most full-length mirrors i've ever seen in disney world resort hotel it means you can see me do this Which is crazy, because usually there's only one full-length mirror. And you know what? These aren't even the real full-length mirrors. This is the real full-length mirror. I can see myself so many ways. Wild. Hey, Quincy. How's it going? Oh, pretty good, Quincy. How about you over there? Quincy, gotta check in with you. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. And you, Quincy? Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm really bad at my camera work on the joke I'm trying to do. I'm just very pleased about the number of mirrors, as you can tell. Heading inside to the closet, we have this first one. It has a bunch of shelf space. Handheld steamer. Now, you will not find a steamer in every single Disney World Resort hotel. It's one of my favorite amenities of the deluxe hotels. So, steamer, very good. We've also got a hair dryer here. So, you've got your in-room programmable safe where you can... Set your code, key it in, keep your valuables in there. And then even more shelf space down here at the bottom. Next closet door, the actual wardrobe. Several hangers for you to hang any clothing that might need it. A luggage uh, rack where you can just throw your bag. Um, plenty of space down here for shoes and things like that. And an extra pillow and blanket if you need it. And of course, you can always request extras. Next, we do have our coffee bar. Now, if you've watched Iron Tears before, stayed in Disney recently in a refurbished room, you'll notice this room has a lot of the marks of a refurbished room. Um, this kind of closet coffee bar combo thing is very typical in recently updated rooms. We've got this very cute art of the boardwalk with Mickey and Minnie having a little picnic, which I love. Um, your ice bucket here and your Keurig here. So Keurig, a little fancier than some of the coffee machines you'll find. Got your K-Cups with Joffrey's coffee, including specialty Walt Disney World blends, plenty of creamer and accoutrements for that coffee, um, as well as plenty of cups, some plastic water cups too. Then down here is where you'll find your fridge. These are really a beverage cooler, they're not a fridge. It's where you'll be able to store your leftovers and stuff, and as long as it isn't anything like fish, should do an okay job um, keeping it cool enough. But yeah, beverage cooler here, connecting door, so if you want to book two connecting rooms, you can. Recycling and trash bin, and our TV, which is awesome. This is a Samsung Smart TV, which is such a nice amenity because you can actually cast from your devices, which game changer, I'll tell ya. Dresser here, six drawers. Uh, these don't look like the biggest drawers. They're not. So typically, drawers are a lot bigger in the refurbished rooms, but this, like, doesn't have very big drawers. Still, I think a good amount of storage space. Here is your remote, and here is your sofa bed. Opening instructions. Very important because there is a sofa bed in this room. So we will, of course do a redecorating montage to check that guy out. More art on the wall here of Mickey and friends enjoying the boardwalk, Mickey and Minnie on a cute little date, and Goofy apparently is an actual entertainer. So he appears to be on a unicycle juggling a bowling ball, soccer ball, shoe, turkey leg, and clock. Very goofy of him. 
I really love that Mickey and Friends are kind of the theme here with the update. We've got Mickey pillows on the couch, this very cute Mickey lamp that does have a little side table for the couch, especially helpful since this is a sofa bed. There are a couple of different views you can get to the boardwalk. Our view is this resort view of the gardens, and we can actually see the top of the Eiffel Tower in the distance, which is fun. You'll have privacy curtains, which I always recommend using because you never know where wandering eyes are looking into your hotel room. And the ever important blackout curtains for when you want that midday nap. These have the same Mickey and Friends silhouettes that we saw on those lights out in the hallways. So very, very cute. I, I mean, I really love this theme. Um, and I was not a big fan of the boardwalk rooms last time I stayed here. The rooms were nice, but they were really outdated. They felt a little aged. A lot of the furniture was scratched up and stuff like that. Um, and they felt like they were dated, not like themed to be dated, where this feels themed to be dated. But let's head on out to the balcony. So here we have our very large balcony. I think we got a really good one here. Some balconies are a little smaller, as you can see, um, and some are literally just little walkouts, but I think those are the bigger rooms. So we have um, some balcony furniture here, nice, with a little table. Plenty spacious out here, looking out over the beautifully manicured grounds. Uh, right over there through the trees, you can see those white picket fences. Those are the club level honeymoon garden cottages. Very romantic, very cute, and Emma and I may or may not be staying there literally next week. So keep an eye out for that video on the channel as well. Um, the balconies are not completely private. As you can see, we have a privacy divider, but it is not like anything substantial. So um, that's just the vibe of the balcony. Beautiful view, I think, especially at this time of night with the sunset. Just gorgeous. We have here the chair. This is a very nice chair. I love the design on this the little Mickey in the middle and the mint color. I also felt like I was smelling mint earlier, but I'm wondering if like maybe I just <laughs> was smelling. No, I was looking at this chair and my brain was like mint. So I wonder if that's what it was. Actually, there's a lot of mint in this room now that I think about it. Big mint vibes, even the couch. So next to the bed, we have this little side table here. There is a wall plug. Now you'll notice a lot of the plugs in this room do have USB ports, which is awesome. The lights next to the bed are these cool hanging lights with these mirrors behind them. And then we've got our beds, two and queen beds in this room. There are also king bed options. Uh, with the two queen beds, we do have the plaid headboard, which is super cute. This is the thing that I think that they've done such a great job where this looks appropriate for turn of the century, but it doesn't feel dated. And obviously it's a brand new furnishing, which helps that, but it just looks very nice. The beds uh, have four pillows each on them. Remember we have the extra pillow in the closet. You could always request more. And um, they have these throw pillows. Now throw pillows are not something you will see in every Disney hotel, pretty much reserved to the deluxes, but I think they just make the room feel so much nicer, so much homier. Um, so that I just love. I love that throw pillow. Obviously, I would pop in the chair and not keep it on the bed when I was on the bed, but I just think it looks so nice. And under the beds, we've got a solid amount of storage space. You could definitely slide some suitcases under here if you wanted to. Between the two beds, we have our main side table. Uh, this is a pretty spacious table. You've got your boardwalk phone with a little note about calls and associated fees. And then you also have your Hey Disney. This is a partnership with Amazon Alexa. It is a voice assistant. When you arrive in your room, it will be muted. I've definitely heard from some people that they don't love the idea of a voice assistant in their room that could be listening at all, even if this little guy says he's muted, that means he's not listening to you. But if you're more comfortable without this, you can unplug him. They leave the plugs accessible for that very reason. But Hey Disney's awesome. Comes with a lot of different features. I really enjoy using this. You can check out a lot more about it in my tour of Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. But you've got how to use Hey Disney, everything it can do. It can tell jokes. Yeah, Disney characters can tell you stories. You can go on adventures with Disney characters, which I really enjoy. My favorite thing about the Hey Disney is the soundscapes um, because there's soundscapes that make it sound like you're walking in the park, soundscapes that make it sound like you are in your favorite movies. I really enjoy those. So it's a, it's a cute touch that you can use or not use um, as you desire. The second table also has its own little shelf in it as well as a drawer that you can find too. And then you've got your other bed, which is the same as the other bed. Oh, I almost forgot like the best thing about these beds. So something you'll find a lot in refurbished Disney rooms are these guys. Bam, light. This is a reading light, which I think is awesome because you never know when you might be staying with someone who has a different sleep schedule than you, or you just need to wind down with a book and they just want to go straight to sleep because they're exhausted. It sucks to have to leave these big guy lights on. 
So it's really nice when both sides of both beds have these little reading lights that you can direct. Then on the other side of the bed, we have another of those floating, floating end tables, um, more outlets and uh, probably, I just love the Mickey Mouse touches in this room so much. I think these are my favorite. It's Pluto with a little bow tie collar, Mickey in a little top hat and tuxedo, and Minnie in the most fabulous turn of the century get up ever. I mean, this room just feels homey. It just feels like, like a home away from home, which is what you want out of your Disney resort. We've also got a thermostat that you can control here, which is great because there can be the temperature you want. It says it's 68 in here. It does not feel like that, but I think it's because it's so cold outside and that's why it feels so hot. Now let's talk bathroom. Here she is, or part of her. Um, really big mirror, uh, double vanity here with plenty of vanity space for things. Um, you've got two sinks. I think you wouldn't have any issue with multiple adults getting ready in this room because there are so many mirrors, you know? Um, but it's always a little bit of a crunch if you have more than two people wanting to like do makeup at the same time. We also have the makeup mirror over here. These guys are really fun because they look, they make me look like this. <laughs> Why? Why does it look like that? Uh, every time I see a new piece of Mickey and Friends art, I literally am like, this is my favorite. I love this one. It's got Crescent Lake and the swan boats with Mickey and Minnie out on the swan boat and Donald and Daisy. That looks so nice. And that's really cool because you actually can take swan boats out on Crescent Lake um, over by Swan and Dolphin. You can rent swan boats. So I love that. Otherwise, things you've got in the bathroom, you've got a tissue box with tissues in it. Um, various toiletries, you've got body lotion, uh, bath soap, mouthwash, that's really nice, a vanity kit and a shower cap. So you're gonna see more toiletry options in deluxes than you will in values or moderates. Um, your sinks here, of course, hand towels folded very nicely. Shout out to the housekeeping staff who have done such a great job with this room. Lots of space under the vanity if you wanted to slide something in there to keep it while you're here and another little trash bin plus some hand towels. Now, separate from this main bathroom space, You've got a door because we've got our full length mirror, which we of course went over, but through this door is where you'll find our toilet and shower room, which is pretty sizable. Usually these rooms are very, very small. Um, this door does have a lock. It's got one of those tiny push pin locks, um, but you can lock this door. And this is just great because someone can be showering while someone's getting ready without causing too much of an issue. Um, you've got plenty of towels in here for you. Some more very nicely folded hand cloths. Little note about how to help them conserve water and energy. Your commode, ever important. More trash bins, toilet paper, extra toilet paper, whole shebang. And um, another just smaller towel over here. We've got a glass door shower, sliding glass door. Um, that's actually very nice. I don't love glass door showers in hotels just because even though I do think they look the nicest, often I'm staying in hotels with like Emma and Emma might need to ask me a question. And it's a lot harder for Emma to ask me a question when she opens the door and it's a glass door because she wouldn't open the door if it's a glass door. If it's a curtain or opaque, she can open the door and be like, hey, Quincy, what are we doing today? And then I can tell her. And if not, I can't. I don't know. Maybe that's a singular issue, but just glass doors in bathrooms. If she left something in here, it would just be a hassle. We also have our refillable Disney shampoo, conditioner, and body wash products. Um, these do lock. So like I always think about like what if other people put weird stuff in here, but they lock. So Disney refills those. Not that I know any super lengthy people, but if, if I did know anybody who was like, like really long in stature, they would have a hard, if I, if I knew that person, they'd have a hard time taking a bath in here. Two separate ledges for you to pop your toiletries of choice. Your shower head here, hot cold controls down here, and of course you can swap it to a bath if you like. Let's test out the water pressure, ever important. Uh, pressure wise, the shower's not great. I actually really love the way the water fans out. Like it's nice that it has like a heavier stream of water in the middle and then softer stream on the sides. It's a nice shower head. It's just that the pressure isn't serving. I like an aggressive shower. I like to be like beat up by my shower head and that's not what that's doing. We've seen the whole room. That is everything there is to see, but that means we have to do the most important part of any room tour and that is a redecorating montage so that we can do bed science, baby. So ready for it? Redecorating montage. That was really easy. Usually it's a lot harder to do the sofa beds. That was like a different, version. Well, I feel like it's like not. Okay. I just didn't get it flat enough. 
Nice. Okay, we'll start with sofa bed science. One thing about bed science, you have to do it safely. Safety first. Never do full jumping bed science on a sofa bed. You will hurt yourself. We do flopping bed science. Oh, it's not bad. I mean, it's certainly like a thinner mattress, but it's pretty nice. Have y'all ever used an Ikea foam mattress? Because that's what this is giving. I think that my back would hurt after sleeping on this for a long time, just because it's not particularly soft. And it's also not firm enough. Like I feel like you either need a mattress that's very firm or a mattress that's soft. Everybody has their preference. I like soft, but firm mattresses also don't like hurt my back. And this one feels like it's got like a dip to it that would hurt your back after a few nights, but great for a kiddo. And just in general, it's nice to be able to cram five people in a hotel room because then those who might not typically be able to afford boardwalk might be able to split a boardwalk room and sleep in here. So, you know, I'm pro this bed. And if I got to stay in this room, I would sleep on it. <laughs> but now for the real bed science, turn of the century bed science with Quincy. <clears throat> Ready? <laughs> yeah, Disney mattress. Disney mattresses are certainly on the firm side, but in a way that still feels like plush. So it's, a, I think, a crowd-pleasing mattress. Um, I have a really plush mattress topper at home, and I still love a Disney mattress. Very supportive. I think you would get a good night's sleep on this for sure. It feels like it's like cradling my body a little bit, but still being very supportive. So I'm pro this bed. And of course, my favorite part, Disney pillows. Ah, I love Disney pillows. Pillows are definitely gonna be on the softer side. If you need a firm pillow, I recommend bringing your own if you can, um, just because I'm a soft pillow girl. I love a Disney pillow. Emma's a firm pillow girl and is not usually as happy with the pillows. Like look at the head sinkage. Pretty good. So bed science successful. And we'll certainly be doing eight full hours of bed science tonight. So be ready for the results. All right, we have explored our boardwalk room. And as you probably saw, it's sunset, it's nighttime. There's a lot, a lot of resort for us to see. Tons of stuff at boardwalk, including a lot of new stuff and a lot of stuff still to come that we're gonna be talking about. And we are certainly not gonna be doing that in the dark, which is why we're gonna spend our boardwalk day tomorrow. So we'll do that in the morning, but we've got lots of fun line up tonight, including dinner at a very special place with some very special friends and some more resort fun. So it's just about time to head to dinner. So I hope you're hungry. Grab your forks uh, and let's go eat. I have made my way back out to the boardwalk where it is beautiful at nighttime out here. And uh, two of my favorite spots on the boardwalk are Abracadabar and Trattoria Al Forno. And tonight we are meeting some friends for... <laughs> No sense of urgency. We're all waiting for you, and you're taking your sweet posture <laughs> 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 I'm just trying to vlog. Like... <laughs> and you're just like, you're just the boardwalk doll. Isn't it beautiful? Some of us are here. some of us are professionals. <laughs> this is um Trattoria, Trattoria, California. Don't say it wrong. <laughs> I told her how to say it earlier and she's bitter about it. <laughs> Emma's also here. I made it. You can see she's in a heavy coat and that is because it is chilly billy outside. It is. It is. It is. It's in the 40s this morning. Yeah, I think it's back in, I think it's getting close to being back in the 40s. So, dinner time with the girls. Trattoria is an old world style Italian restaurant that serves breakfast and dinner. In the past it has had a character breakfast but that never returned after the pandemic and it's got really cool waiters. Right, when you eat at Trattoria Al Forno, you do get a bread course. They have these delicious looking crusty rolls and they're olive oil with a garlic confit which I want to eat this with a spoon alone. Our food has arrived very quickly, by the way. We love it here, the service is amazing. This is actually an underrated All Ears favorite. Our readers and viewers always talk about how much they love this spot. Um, especially the service and the staff and also the food is good too and there's also Italian wine and dessert it's amazing so we have gotten the entrees here I went with the truffle gnocchi with Parmesan Fontina and truffle cream uh, there's also the Parmigiana di Pollo which is breaded chicken breast Parmigiana Reggiano provolone and rustic tomato sauce and then we have the lasagna al forno which is blended Italian cheeses beef veal pork and herbs ricotta oh, trying my truffle gnocchi yeah. This is maybe one of the best pasta dishes I've ever had at Disney. Super soft, perfectly cooked, warm pillowy gnocchi. Tons of fresh cracked black pepper. You can like tell it's fresh cracked. And it's in this like creamy sauce with olive oil too. 
that just like kind of mellows out the truffle flavor. But there's a ton of truffle flavor. You feel it in your nose. You feel it in the back of your throat. And there's the Parmesan crisp on top for a little bit of a variance in the texture. Really amazing. Our server said it's his favorite thing on the menu right now. And I think this is relatively new because I do not believe this was on the menu last time I came here. Which, it's totally awesome. Um, so I highly recommend this if you like truffle. I just saw Quincy's eyes flicker to me. And now I'm under a lot of pressure. I just went for a classic lasagna. <laughs> That's actually a really soft kind of melt in your mouth lasagna with a nice crunch on top, which I think adds a really great texture. The tomato's not really bright. I think overall it's more muted, but it's very creamy and cheesy and delicious. So I'm not unhappy with this lasagna at all. I think it's a pretty solid lasagna. She just asked me if she could try a bite, and I said yes. And she said, no, I cannot. Oh wait, did I tell you no? Or when did you I tell, tell you? her you no said, though, she has more. She said yes, and then I said, I said no, you failed my test, and I have oh, my allergy yeah. stick. She has an allergy stick, so if you have allergies, make sure to alert your server so, so that they can <laughs> so they can sound the alarms. This evening I'm enjoying a bit of chicken parm. <laughs> Okay, as far as the chicken parm goes, I actually really liked it. I normally am not someone who, that's the dish I'm gonna go for, but the chicken was nice and crispy. The cheese was good and salty on top. The cavatelli on the bottom was super fresh and I actually really, really loved that aspect of it. Now the sauce is what I thought was so interesting. It tastes exactly like you want it to. It's very tomatoey, very fresh. Um, and I think there's like a hint of basil in it. But overall, I really liked it. It felt well-rounded, but it also wasn't super elevated. It's exactly what you want a chicken if you are ordering something and you want it to be familiar. Okay, we all got the same dessert because they have affogato here, which is amazing and we love it. Affogato is um, typically ice cream or gelato. In this case, it's vanilla gelato topped with espresso, a hot shot of espresso. They poured it right on top of our ice cream at the table. It looks amazing. Um. <laughs> Are you laughing because it's a hot shot? <laughs> it's awesome because it's hot and it's cold. It's bitter and it's super sweet. It's just a very balanced dessert. It's also like my favorite dessert in the world. Definitely for coffee lovers, like the espresso flavor doesn't go away, but it is really, really tasty. And I'm excited that it comes with a little puff of pastry as well. We're back in the room. So we are going to get into jammies and watch whatever we find on Disney Plus. Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson. Whoa. Can we start from the beginning? No. <laughs> Okay. Well, we're going to do that, I guess. You haven't been watching. Um, and then we're going to do some extended eight-hour bed science, and uh, at least I'll see you in the morning. Good night. You have a little fluff. Oh. Good morning. Day two, resort day of our boardwalk staycation. I have been abandoned by Emma and Cassie, so if you guys want to yell at them for abandoning me in the comments, that would be good. Um, they should feel bad. But now it's our resort day. So first things first, best thing about a, a resort day is you get to sleep in. There's no rushing to yeah, your favorite attraction. Everything you're doing around the hotel is still gonna be there when you wake up. So you can just take a little snooze, which I highly recommend if you are headed to Disney World to plan a day that you are taking it easy. Fairly big lizard. Plan a day that you are taking it easy so that it's a little bit easier for you to have the energy you need for those really long, really exhausting park days. So resort day, we've slept in a little. It's late morning. The resort's beautiful, the weather's gorgeous, and we get to explore. So I started my day with a little bit of a wander because um, I'm just checking out these really cool rooms out here, which are like these little garden cottages. Um, and the reason I'm checking these out is because these rooms uh, Emma and I will be staying in them next week. Uh, they do have access to club level, so we'll be checking out Disney World club level in a garden cottage, which are usually intended for like, you know, honeymooners couples. So perfect for me and Emma. And that will be coming to the channel soon. All right, we are gonna kick off our resort tour in the lobby, which we saw yesterday a little bit, of course, but beautiful theme. Um, and one thing we didn't talk about yesterday are the nanny chairs. I glazed over them, but I got distracted by the fire. And now we gotta talk nanny chairs. Some of my favorite details in the boardwalk lobby are these paintings up high of some of the castles. They're a little hard to notice, but I definitely recommend looking up and checking them out. I also love this elephant. <laughs> um, and then these are the nanny chairs. Um, there used to be four of them around the hotel. Um, so far, I can only find like three at a time, but their feet really freak me out. And the story is that they're haunted and they 
run around the hotel. So I don't think that is necessarily true, but just something to keep in mind is that the nanny chairs are spooky. Um, but we are actually going to start our day at Carousel Coffee. Now, Carousel Coffee is the newish coffee shop here at Boardwalk. This is one of the updates where this used to be just kind of like a small sundry shop, and they've updated it to be a really lovely coffee shop with pastries and things like that. And I obviously need coffee to be able to resort to her effectively. So we're going to head on in. The theming is a little like bland like in the actual interior design but I absolutely love these pictures on the wall of Disneyland including Julie Andrews with the carousel which is such a fun picture and would be a great game master or scavenger hunt uh, puzzle is find that so that will be on there for sure all right I went with the shakerado which is a double espresso shaken over ice with vanilla I have not seen this at other Joffrey's coffee shops around Disney World so I'm pretty excited about it shaken espresso is one of my favorite ways to drink espresso over ice so I'm pretty pumped I'm sorry this is the ideal scenario I'm sitting by a fire I have a fresh coffee from carousel coffee the nanny chairs are hanging out with me which is de cool and not scary and I think they're really I think they're really cool and not at all scary. I'm very pro this shaker auto. It is super like it's the perfect balance of sweetness from the vanilla and bitterness from the coffee. It's super light and drinkable. Um, I think you definitely need like coffee flavor to like something like this, but it's awesome and I love that it's an option here because it feels more like a real coffee than like a super sugary latte. Um, uh, and of course, Joffrey's espresso just rocks, so I enjoy this a lot. I'm gonna sit here and enjoy my fire for a minute. We can hang out. What's going on? How's life been? Oh, that's good. Mm. Well, I mean, did anything interesting come of that? Oh, well, see, that's good. You know, that's something that we all hope for. And it's just, how, it's, I'm glad to hear that. All right, my coffee is done. I've soaked in the ambiance. So let's check out more of the hotel. So lobby, you know that this is where your front desk is gonna be, very important. You've also got bell services like we talked about yesterday if you need to drop off your bags because you either arrive early or leave after you have to be out of your room. You also, because this is a Disney Vacation Club hotel, there is a Disney Vacation Club stand in the lobby where you can learn about the timeshare program here in Disney World. And let's step out on the deck. Cute little carousel. The deck out here is a wonderful place to relax, looking out over the boardwalk and the water. I see people out here all the time. The chairs are comfortable, just like in the lobby, so it's just a great place to sit and soak in the vibes. Especially having a resort day is nice because it gets you out of the crowds because most people head to the park. There's just not gonna be a ton of people hanging out around your hotel. So this lawn out here is called the Village Green, and I always see families playing, kiddos playing. This is also where they'll do the movie Under the Stars, if the weather is permitting, which is one of the recreation offerings at the boardwalk. There are tons of recreation options at the boardwalk. Um, but this is where you'll find a lot of them. Sometimes there will be cast members out with little lawn games and things like that. And it's just in general a nice place to hang out, kind of sitting in this very idyllic atmosphere with the boardwalk surrounding. Um, I'm walking over here to show you the boardwalk resort activities board. Whenever you stay at any Disney hotel, I highly recommend checking out the activities board. These are usually located by the pool or just outside of the lobby. It will tell you all of the activities that you can find around the hotel, especially if you're doing a resort day. This is very important. So we've got our movie under the stars. We've got activities beyond the pool with the pool hours too. Some of these activities are going to cost money. Like earlier I saw a snow globe. Um, crafting outside the lobby which is really cool but some are free so campfire poolside activities there's a community hall here where you can go and watch movies and hang out with the cast members just a lot of really fun options for during your stay both paid and free and the paid ones are typically not too expensive and often end up in you getting a souvenir that you had a hand in making yourself so I really enjoy those we are gonna head over to the Boardwalk Villas side of the hotel. The villas are the Disney Vacation Club option at this hotel, so that's gonna be the timeshare program, but you can rent them even if you aren't a part of the DVC. We have promenade galleries here, which are just Disney um, art and also like some non-Disney art, so if you wanna do some art shopping or even just peruse. And then coming under this way, we're gonna find Muscles and Bustles Health Club, which is the gym you need to get a workout in on your vacation. There's also a jogging trail at this hotel. And we've got the arcade. Here is that running trail, which you can see goes all around Crescent Lake. One of the most beautiful runs 
in Disney World, I think. It goes right around the boardwalk and over across to Beach and Yacht Club. Now it's 0.8 miles all the way around, so nothing too bad. I will just caution that that area does tend to get a lot more crowded in the evening time, so if you're an evening runner, just be prepared for that. So the boardwalk is pretty huge. You can see it kind of loops around this way. The hotel lobby is here in the center. You'll find your parking up this way, um, both valet, convention parking, standard guest parking, all of it. We also have the villas on this side where you will find Luna Park Pool and the Villa Leisure Pool. And then this is the main boardwalk where all that shopping and dining is. On this side, you find the standard boardwalk inn and there's an inn leisure pool over here. So that's it. You've also got here your boat transportation to Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios. You can also walk this way to Epcot or walk this way and then this way to Hollywood Studios. So um, it's pretty easy to navigate. Uh, a larger hotel, but not the largest. It's certainly not gonna have you walking all over Tarn Nation. Um, but yeah, so this is Luna Park Pool, which is the feature pool at this hotel. It is home to a pool bar with Leaping Horse Libations, which has some really nice like pool drinks. They often have special kind of circus themed drinks and a pretty sizable pool here as well. Now the pool itself isn't super large, but there are tons of pool chairs. So typically you're gonna be able to find a seat. And there's a really fun slide here that has a bit of an interesting history. That roller coaster themed slide over there is called the Keister Coaster. And you can see it's got that front that has Mickey and friends all hanging out on that Keister Coaster slide. Now the thing about the Keister Coaster is that it used to be an absolutely terrifying nightmare clown. And I'm, I mean that very seriously. It was a very scary slide, um, especially at night where its eyes glowed and looked into your soul. But luckily they've made some updates to it. There's also the Luna Park Crazy Play area over here. Um, and just in general, the vibe's really good. Music's playing, activities are happening. Their kids are playing an emoji quiz like kids these days do. So pretty fun stuff. Now we've talked about how there's still some construction going on on this hotel with some refurbishment. That is still the case. Um, when this happens, construction will occur during like waking hours. So you won't have any construction noise at night or anything like that, but it can affect your stay. If you ever book a hotel and then find out later that there's gonna be a ton of construction going on and that doesn't work for you, you can always call Disney, modify your reservation. Just make sure you're checking back on the hotel's uh, main page on the Disney website or keeping an eye on allears.net to find out when construction projects are gonna pop up. The boardwalk is home to a few sports courts as well. There are tennis courts as well as a croquet lawn, which is super fun. And over here where I am right now, you'll see this like kind of roadway, but there's also across a walkway on the water. And that is the 15 minute walk to Hollywood Studios. A very pleasant walk. Um, but if you're not feeling walking, you can also take a boat, which we will certainly stop by the boat dock later today. So I can show you where that is too. Now there are the two leisure pools. This is where there's not gonna be any like exciting recreation or music going on. The more relaxing, quieter pools, usually fewer kiddos running around if you're looking for kind of a nicer pool afternoon. This one over here is the Villa Leisure Pool. Oh, I love that they have giant chess. Maybe Emma and I can play giant chess. We're more checkers gals, but you know, chess is fun too. Also something you'll find at Disney Vacation Club resorts are usually grill spots. There's this grill out here, which is a very interesting looking grill. That is loud. And here's the campfire where you'll find campfire activities. Also by this pool is the Boardwalk Community Hall. Community Hall is an amenity you'll find at Disney Vacation Club Resorts, but it's not limited to those staying in DVC rooms. You'll find a lot of different recreation options and fun to be had in community halls. Uh, you can also sometimes find like board games or things that you can borrow and take back to your room. They, during their open hours, will have cast members to help you out with anything you might need. They're playing movies, they sometimes are doing crafts. So if you have a resort day, especially if you've got kiddos, I do recommend a stop at the community hall. Now, while we're strolling back around to check out more of the boardwalk proper, I wanna check out those beds. I slept like a baby, like a rock. Babies don't sleep very well, so I don't know why we say that, but mattresses are super comfortable. I just feel like also just having a nice ambiance makes it easier to sleep. I really enjoyed it. I love the new rooms. I think it was awesome. Um, checkout is at 11 a.m. It's past 11 now, but I was able to check out. Just took my bags to my car, but if you didn't have your car, you could put them in with Bell Services, and the checkout is automatic, so I didn't have to do anything but make sure I was out of the room by 11 a.m. Checkout happens, all that jazz. You do get a folio emailed to you very early in the morning on your checkout day, so you can check that folio to make sure everything is correct. If anything is incorrect or you want a physical copy of your folio or you need anything else, 
you can stop by the front desk and just let them know and they'll be happy to help. I have had things slightly incorrect on my folios before and they fixed them so quickly for me on my way out. So super easy. All right, we're coming up the Hollywood Studios path, which passes by two hotels that you're relatively close to when you stay aboard walk, walking distance. And that is the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Hotels. These hotels are Marriott owned, but they do have a lot of really amazing food and drink options. Now the Disney Boardwalk is an entertainment and dining area on Crescent Lake. Uh, all along it, seasonally, you can find midway games, jugglers, entertainers, hand wax molds, food vendors, and magic shows, which is awesome. Uh, but it's just a really fun area. Also has some of the best nightlife in Disney World. And the biggest perk of staying at the Boardwalk Hotel is that Boardwalk Hotel is on the Boardwalk. In addition to the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin, you can also easily walk to the Yacht and Beach Club resorts to take part in any of their dining or just check out their atmosphere. Uh, both of them have really great lobby cells, so you can take a walk over there. And we're walking distance to Epcot which we'll talk a little bit more in a second. On this end of the boardwalk, we have those two big nightlife options. This is the Atlantic Dance Hall, which is what it sounds like. It is a dance hall with bars, uh, just kind of regular standard bars. It is typically very empty. Um, there's no cover. It's only 21 and up. Um, and they play music videos on the screen and nobody is ever in there. And we love to go there. Um, a lot of times for fun, for people's birthdays, we'll go to Atlantic Dance Hall because it feels like you rent the place out. So if that sounds like a good vibe or you don't want to pay what is often a very expensive cover for Jelly Rolls, then you could check out Atlantic Dance Hall. Jelly Rolls is the very exciting nightlife that you'll find here. Very, very popular dueling piano bar where two pianists play requests and go back and forth. Um, the drinks are good. The atmosphere is very fun. And this is a favorite for many. Um, I just heard that it had been ranked as one of the best bars in the country, which is pretty cool. So Jelly Rolls, also an option, usually open till a little before 2 a.m. There's a food truck here right now, which is really something. Um, Apps food truck. I've never seen a food truck on the boardwalk before, but it looks good. If you are interested in the Disney Vacation Club, they do have a suite that you can tour, a model villa, um, which you'll find in this blue building that says Crest of the Wave. Then we have Big River Grill, except it's not Big River Grill anymore. So just recently it was announced that Big River Grill and Brewing Works would be closing. Um, it was kind of sudden. We noticed that it didn't have any hours on the website anymore and signage is down, you know, so possible the Big River Brewing Works is no more and that maybe something else will be coming in that space, which would of course fit the theme. If you want to do some shopping for Disney merch while you're on the boardwalk, you should head to Screen Door General Store slash Disney's Character Carnival slash Thimbles and Threads. This is one big store that is themed to be a couple of little ones to fit into the theming of the boardwalk, but you can find pretty much anything you might need in here. It's a large merchandise store. There are some uh, more expensive designer vacation brands. You can find magic bands and hats and other Disney apparel. You can find toys and ears and more souvenirs. I didn't expect to ride in there, but I did. Um, so this is gonna be a great one-stop shop. Now, I don't recommend waiting to buy all your souvenirs in the resort store, because if you see something in the park that you love, there's no guarantee that it will be here at Screen Door when you get here. But if you do need to grab something or want to grab something, you can come shopping down here. Um, my favorite room of Screen Door General Store is the one on the end, um, closest to the boardwalk, which is where you can find all sorts of snacks, as well as essentials like sunscreen medicine, baby food, tweezers, things that you might need and what's fun about screen door is they have a little candy wall plus Goofy's glaciers and they have a bakery case with some of those exciting bakery case options that you can find in the theme parks including a Werther's original caramel butter bar which is like my favorite thing that you can get they have Werther's caramel apples here which are what you can get in Epcot which are so so good that's exciting. So Boardwalk Bakery case, really fun, especially for a resort day to still have some kind of park esque snack. And then they also have some like actual like oven pizzas, microwave meals, toaster stuff, because those DVC rooms do have uh, full kitchens in some cases. The Boardwalk also has Surrey bike rentals that you can bike all around Crescent Lake, which is a very fun family activity. Although I'll warn you, the route is not flat. So if you want to rent a story bike or a double story bike, uh, just be prepared to do some pedaling uphill, especially if you've got little ones who will not be doing much pedaling. Across from story bike rental, right in the middle, we're right by that lawn, you will find Promenade Pier, which is how you'll get on the boats to head to Hollywood Studios and Epcot. Now this is the last stop before heading to Epcot, so it's a very short boat ride to Epcot, but it is the first stop before heading to Disney's Hollywood Studios, so a bit of a longer boat ride. 
Um, to Hollywood Studios, you're probably looking at a 10, 15 minute boat ride. To Epcot, you're probably looking at a five, 10 minute boat ride. Um, I think Hollywood Studios could spike up to 20 depending on how quickly the boat loads at the different stops. But I am very pro boat in Disney World. I think these friendship boats are so relaxing and a great way to save some steps when you're on your way to take a ton of stuff from the theme parks. So a, an amazing amenity. Boats come every 20 minutes to both Hollywood Studios and Epcot. You can also take that 15 to 20 minute walk. Um, and actually you have access to the Skyliner. If you head to the Epcot entrance, you can hop on the Skyliner to head to those Skyliner hotels. Disney's Riviera Resort, Disney's Pop Century Resort, Disney's Art of Animation Resort, and you can even take it over to Hollywood Studios, but it's gonna be a bit slower than boating or walking. Flying Fish is a spot where you'll find gourmet seafood, and I've heard really amazing things about this spot, which um, I've never personally eaten there. It's one of the few restaurants that I haven't actually made it to yet. So uh, if you'd like to see a review of Flying Fish or at least hear more about it, uh, let me know in the comments. Next door we have Abracadabra. This is one of my favorite lounges in Disney World. You, and according to the story, you can still feel the magic in the air of this former haunt of boardwalk magicians and entertainers, a group that mysteriously vanished over 70 years ago. And there's nods to the boardwalk entertainers inside Abracadabra. You can see that their drinks seemingly are sitting exactly where they left them. Mysterious. Usually opens about 4 p.m. Of course, we remember Trattoria Al Forno from dinner, a lovely Italian restaurant that we enjoyed. Just next door, we have the pizza window. The pizza window is home to just slices of cheese and pepperoni pizza, um, as well as like mini cannoli garden salad. It's just a great walk up, quick bite, and it's usually open pretty late until midnight, which is great for, and maybe if you're having a good time at Atlantic Dance Hall or Jelly Rolls. If you're a margarita fan, you might want to stop by Boardwalk Joe's. They also have a full liquor bar, as well as Dole Whip. They've got Dole Whip pineapple, they have Mickey shaped pretzels, so if you're missing those iconic treats on your resort day, don't you worry, they've got them at Boardwalk Joe's. Next door, we have Boardwalk Deli, which has fresh, hot, and cold deli sandwiches, baked breads, and select bakery items. Offers breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if you remember, Boardwalk Deli used to be Boardwalk Bakery. Some favorites from Boardwalk Bakery that are still served are, include the brownie cheesecake, coconut macaroon, and the cookies and cream cupcake. If you're looking for something a little sweeter, you can head next door to Boardwalk Ice Cream, which is an ice cream shop inspired by the very popular beaches and cream across the lake. They have some very good Sundays here very uh, tasty time. And then our final location has yet to open at the time of filming. Uh, this used to be ESPN Club and it's going to be the Cake Bake Shop by Gwendolyn Rogers. It's coming in early 2024. Uh, it'll be a new table service restaurant that serves items for brunch, lunch, and dinner featuring both sweet and savory menus. It will also offer an afternoon tea service, champagne bar, to-go bakery case. Um, and Gwendolyn Rogers and other locations of the Cake Bake Shop have recently received multiple awards and been recognized on Food Network, Oprah, Rachel Ray, all sorts of stuff. Uh, there will be six different areas where guests can have private events or parties too. So it's gonna be a pretty elaborate dining location and we will certainly check it out on the channel when it opens. And the boardwalk kind of ends right here, but this is where you'll find that walkway to Epcot, truly about 10 minutes from the edge of the hotel, or you know, where, wherever you take your Surrey bike, if that's what you're doing instead of walking to Epcot. The great thing about the proximity to Epcot and Hollywood Studios is that if all of the dining locations at Boardwalk Inn are not enough, if all of the dining locations at Yacht and Beach and Swan and Dolphin are not enough, you can still, if you have park admission, head into Epcot or Hollywood Studios for more food. So you have tons of food and fun options when you're staying here. That's why this location is so spectacular. You can really tell we're talking about a deluxe hotel here just by how many amenity and food options there are. And we still got more to see. Um, but first we're gonna head up this staircase, which is one of my favorite photo spots at the boardwalk. I love to take selfies with this cute little to the boardwalk sign. Um, but up here, we're gonna spot the bus stop. So this is the front where you'll get dropped off or arrive when you first get here, get your bags grabbed by Bell Services. And then down this way is where you'll find the bus stop. Now, of course, you can boat or walk to Epcot and Hollywood Studios, but if you're headed anywhere else, you're gonna wanna hop on a bus. Buses leave about every 20 minutes, headed to Animal Kingdom, Magic Kingdom. The Animal Kingdom bus will transfer you to Blizzard Beach. You can go to Disney Springs. Bus come to that bus stop. And there is a little board that will tell you how often they come. And then down here, we have the Boardwalk Convention Center. So this is a convention hotel. Something to keep in mind because you might end up with convention crowds. Now typically they're not all that disruptive, speaking from experience, but just something that could kind of catch you off guard. Because of that, this hotel does have an awesome business center. So if you have any need to print anything while you're here, you're good. Um, it actually does not look like there's a convention going on, which is pretty cool. 
But here's a very speedy walkthrough from this very fancy convention center as I head back to the main building. Another location that is coming soon to the boardwalk is Blue Ribbon Corn Dogs. This is a famous corn dog spot that is in Disneyland in downtown Disney. It serves up some iconic options, including the pickle corn dog served with peanut butter for dipping. Yes, for real. Um, but that location is coming to the boardwalk. We're just not exactly sure when. We are back in the main lobby. This time we're gonna go to the right because there's one more dining location that is a favorite of mine and has had a few updates. It's not open right now. It usually opens around 4 p.m. But this is Bellevue Lounge. Bellevue Lounge is um, a really beautiful kind of bar area. Uh, they serve up specialty drinks. And I think it's going to be our stop when we stay here in the Boardwalk Cottage. So if you want to learn more about Bellevue Lounge, go check that video out. And the only other thing to talk about is going to be out these doors with the in pool. The other leisure pool. So again, one that's not gonna be quite as exciting. We actually saw it earlier when I was telling you about the garden suites. All right, so back here is the in pool. This is probably the quieter of the two and you're not limited to the area of the hotel you're staying. If you're in the villas, you can come to the in pool. If you're in the in pool, you can go to the villas pool. There's no rules about that. As long as you are staying at this hotel, you have access to the pools. And the in pool is very quiet and very peaceful and also in these very beautiful gardens with these beautiful garden cottages that I can't wait to stay in. And that's everything at the Boardwalk Inn. So that means we gotta talk about, is it worth it? So first up, we gotta talk Disney perks. When you stay at any Disney hotel, you get a lot of Disney perks, like access to that free Disney transportation. You get early entry to the theme park of your choice 30 minutes prior to park open every single day. Um, so those perks are awesome. You can also get the Disney dining plan if you like and be able to kind of, you know, prepay for your food. Uh, if you're curious about if the dining plan is worth it, you can check out Emma's very good video about the dining plan that is on the channel now. The other perk that you'll get, because Boardwalk is a deluxe hotel, you will get extended evening hours. So on select nights, after the park is closed, you'll get several hours in the park after all the guests who are not in deluxe resorts have gone home, which is probably the best perk. For the pros, the first big one is location. You're so close to the parks, other hotels, you have access to the Boardwalk. It's just an awesome location that really rivals every other possible location including the modern railroad hotels because you're close to magic kingdom with those but you are not close to two parks another pro is that there are tons of great dining and entertainment options you've got those nicer amenities and then finally a big pro a new one the refurbished rooms the rooms are fresh they're nice they're beautifully done and they feel like a nice escape experience for the cons, this resort is on the pricey side, so you have to be willing to splurge, and that's always gonna be a con with deluxe resorts. Not only are deluxe resorts nicer hotels, they also still have that Disney premium, so you're looking at a pretty expensive spend. There's also noisy nightlife. If you're in one of those rooms that faces out on the boardwalk, especially on a weekend, you might run into more noise than you'd like in the middle of the night. As the luxury resorts go, Luna Park Pool, though fun, is not the best pool. It's not the largest, the theming isn't the most all-encompassing, so it's just probably not gonna be the best pool, which is a bit of a con, especially if you are a pool family. And though we have those reverse rooms, we're also dealing with construction right now, a ton of construction, as this resort gets its makeover. So that's another thing to just be aware of is that there might be some construction noise during the day and it's gonna be a little unsightly in areas of the hotel. Anyway, you cut it, Boardwalk is expensive. It is not the spot if you're looking to save. It's also not the spot if you're gonna spend open to close in the park every day and just need a place to lay down your head. It's just not gonna be worth the splurge in that case. But if it's a bucket list item for you, if you're looking to splurge and have a nicer stay, if you're planning on having a resort day or two boardwalk is an amazing option i've absolutely loved my stay here hanging out with my friends at this hotel is just such a blast this one has always been a bucket list for me i've stayed here before for the channel and staying here again was just as wonderful so it is an amazing stay it's just pricey but with that we have talked about everything you need to know about disney's boardwalk and resort if you like this video go ahead and like it subscribe and now go watch what we're filming right now which is our major game master tournament in disney world i'll see you there